On AutoLine this week, we're going to be talking about fashion and design in the automotive industry. But in this case, we're not talking about the design of the cars. We're talking about the design of outfits that product specialists have been showing at auto shows for well over half a century. We're going to take you through different eras of different outfits that models have been wearing at auto shows. So don't go away. We're going to be back with all of this right after this. From our studios in the Motor City, this is AutoLine. Here now is John McElroy. Thanks for joining us here in the studio right now. And joining me here are Marjorie Krevsky, who has written the book Sirens of Chrome, all about the different outfits that product specialists have worn at auto shows over the last half century. And joining us today, too, is Karen Buscemi, the editor of Styleline magazine, who's a expert in all these matters that we're going to be getting mm -hmm. into. Great having the both of you here on AutoLine with Thank me today. You. Thank you. Marjorie, let's talk about design and fashion in the auto industry. A lot of people don't think that. They think, you know, engineering and technology and all right. that. But the history of style in the industry really goes back to General Motors' first designer, Harley Earl, yes, way back was. when. He is, in my estimation, in the fashion world, it's Coco Chanel, who was the breakthrough designer. Harley Earl was the breakthrough designer in automotive. And what a story he has. He came from Hollywood. He became a vice president of General Motors in charge of their art and color area. And when he was hired by Alfred Sloan, the um, president of General Motors, many people laughed at that. They thought the engineering and the financial component was much more important. But he proved them wrong. Because of his designs, General Motors increased their sales. Thus, it became a very credible component of automotive from the beginning of the industry. So now we fast forward a little bit to when did uh, product specialists then called models at auto shows. When, when did that sort of connection that start to happen? That started, uh, a product specialists or models at auto shows began from almost the very first auto show in 1905-1908. First auto show was either at the New York Coliseum or the Chicago Coliseum. Both uh, towns want that great honor. Mm -hmm. But in both instances, people realized that you had to have a live presence standing beside an automobile because it's people that interpret an automobile and it's people that look at an automobile and decide its function. So from the very first show, there were models and product specialists. In fact, the very first one was not a model, it was a family, it was a physician's family. Because at the beginning of the 1900s, remember, we still had horses and carriages, and you had to prove that this newfangled invention, the automobile, really would work. So a physician's family showed that the automobile had a life of, it was dependable, it could save lives, it was a family-oriented thing. And then when Henry Ford developed the assembly line and vehicles became something that everyone could attain to, product specialists came into their own because people wanted to see the cars and a person standing beside it. And what they wear or wore was very critical to the whole image of people buying cars. Karen, you're a specialist in fashion and design. What do you make of all this, of having the outfits of these product specialists tie in with the cars that they're representing at auto shows? Well, it certainly makes a lot of sense. You know, I think that people want to see what they want to be. So they see this beautiful woman, and she's dressed in this very particular way, and here's this car that that has that same idea tied to it. And you look at that, it's like a total package now, where it's not just a car, it's not just an outfit. And you see almost like a lifestyle of who I can become by taking this automobile and making it my own and driving it around. So, and I think that you also see how the two really tie together, just the way that car manufacturers and designers, fashion designers have partnered throughout the years and in more ways than I think most people realize. You know, you even take somebody like Gucci, this luxury brand who back in the 70s partnered with the Hornet and had those Gucci green and red stripes going down, you know, the, the <laughs> car and and 
That one might not have been so successful, but even today, they're doing it again with the Fiat 500. They have brought it out if you've... Gucci, yes. Gucci, yes. And I'm sure you've been reading your September Vogue. And as you've yes, been going through... I, I read the press release, but go yeah. ahead. But they have um, a full-page ad of the new Gucci car, the Fiat 500, with the striping again, with the beautiful model, basically, you know, kind of white snaked on the car with her Gucci outfit on. And it really is showing how strong that combination still is. It's really all about image. And that began about 1953, the real contemporary partnership between automobiles and design. In 1953, the New York Auto Show Division hired the couturier Hattie Carnegie to design outfits and ensembles to go beside the cars of that particular show. And that continues today? That continues today. Almost every major designer has worked with an automotive company to either have their own either concept car or a car that was meant for, for the public. There is Bill Blass, Oscar de la Renta, uh, who worked with General Motors, with Chrysler. You have the coach car that came out in the 1980s. So anyone who likes fashion and likes cars can usually find an alignment between the two of them. Karen, how good a job does the automotive industry do in that regard? I mean, is it leading fashion, following it? How do you see it? I think it's interesting how they parallel each other and considering that they really do have different production cycles. You know, fashion, you're working maybe a year out. Cars, you're working three years out. And yet it's interesting, like you even look today and what's become very um, trendy in fashion are bold colors and lots of structure. And you're seeing that coming out in the cars now too and even though they're coming out at the same time they've started these processes at different times along the way so it's interesting to see how they are paralleling each other so who makes these outfits that these product specialists are wearing well they can either be off the rack or they can be specially designed and every single automotive manufacturer has their own idea of the brand and that brand idea must come across of course in the vehicle but also in what the product specialist wears. So it's a very intense discussion. When we have done it both ways, either a designer, and I have a designer on staff who will go in and sit with the marketing people and even some of the engineering people and advertising people, and they will throw out names. Maybe the uh, vehicle is energetic, bold, or whatever. And from all of these words, the designer will translate in, it into a group of sketches to present to the marketing department and then they will look at it they'll choose fabrics based on even some of the materials in the car and then create it from there so it's very brand specific you know when you go to an auto show and you go to each exhibit you see the car but the people who are representing it look like they belong with the car mm -hmm. So, Karen, do you ever look at auto shows to see what's coming in design, or are you already anticipating that the industry is just following what you already know about? Well, not necessarily. And once again, I think it so much depends on who the the auto manufacturer is marketing their car cars toward. Um, you know, if you're going for a more youthful audience, I think you're going to see those trends more, where maybe if your audience is a little bit older, you're going to see a more conservative style, which perhaps that's how they're dressing as well, going with more conservative designers. That's a good point, Marjorie. I can't it believe is. it's all glamour and oh, no. beauty. Some brands are no, pretty not. down to earth, so to speak. Well, uh, let's take Scion, for example. You remember when it started, it was really edgy. It was going to be unlike anything else. And when we were challenged with, first of all, the product specialists who were going to be involved, they needed to be people with body piercings, dreadlocks, <laughs> tattoos. I mean, that was not glamour in those days. That was a difficult assignment. And then the wardrobe was going to be anti-glamour, was going to be worn jeans, layered t-shirts, industrial boots, lots of great goth jewelry. It was going to look very different, and it still does. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to do. <laughs> So it's all a matter of pairing the right outfits we, and and the, the models themselves with the proper brand. Yes. In, in fact, when you audition models or product specialists for each one of the brands, there is a very specific 
look, a very specific energy. And of course, they all have to be smart and be able to be gearheads and talk car, but they have to have a certain look also. And it, yeah, it's going to be even hair and makeup and the whole thing ties together. Exactly. Well, look, enough of talking about all this. We've got to go and take a look at some <laughs> the of the clothes. outfits that right. have Absolutely. been demonstrated over the last half century. We're going to be back in just a minute to show you what we've been talking about. Well, as promised, we're about to show you some of the fantastic outfits that have been used at auto shows over the last half century. But before we get to that, take a look at some of the photos we've set up here in the studio, which show different eras of auto shows and capture the feeling there, not just with the cars, of course, but with the outfits that the models would have been using. And now, let's get started here. Let's bring on the first model. Marjorie, tell me about this. And I love this pastel color to of begin Of course, with. it's beautiful. We're going, the era is the 1950s, and this dress stood beside a Ford Sunliner. And the color is very unique and important because the color of the car was exactly this color also. And during that era, Ford and many other manufacturers were focusing cars in pastel colors to appeal to women. And that's exactly what you see here. Karen, I love the, the long gloves, too. Are you ever going to see that making a comeback? We already are, actually. Um, a lot of the outerwear is a shorter sleeve length so that women can wear longer gloves and be able to show them while they're outside during the cold. So we're seeing those right now, and they're very glamorous. They really are. Very good. And let's bring up the next one. And here's another glamorous look. We're still in the 1950s, and this dress stood beside a Buick, the special series model 41. And these were very special cars. They had a very great looking grill. They were very sophisticated. And she stood beside a black car with a great massive grill. And look at the top of this dress, the beautiful lace work. So they were very parallel in design. Karen, what is it about this outfit? Because I'm not into dresses per se, but I find this really elegant. This really hits me right. That The hat looks a little bit dated, but why does this dress look contemporary to me? Well, it's interesting that you should say that because this dress uh, features two trends that are very hot for fall, and that is the midi length skirt that's coming down about halfway to your calf, and the lace top. Lace and the midi length are as hot as it gets, and here you go, you know, fashion is cyclical. Maybe, maybe car design isn't, but fashion sure is. So what goes around comes around in fashion. But they're classics, like the little black dress is a classic. And this certainly has all of those elements. And even in car design, people love some of those classics. And our microphones aren't picking it up, but you hear the rustling of the oh, dress. Yeah. So there's a sound to it as well. Yes, that's another element of fashion that in the 1950s was very prevalent because these were very ladylike looks. And they had matching accessories like the hat, the shoes. They even had a handbag that would match the shoes. Real good. Well, time for the next one to come up. And now we're still in the 1950s. But now vibrant color. Mm -hmm. Yes. We changed the pattern and the hue exactly. This is again from Ford, whereas we saw the dress before in the pastels, Ford went very vibrant in the 50s also with, with the custom line design of vehicles. And notice it has some drama to it, the one shoulder uh, twirl of fabric and the beautiful fabric itself. And remember, these are not just dresses you saw on the rack. These stood beside vehicles at auto shows and were there to enhance the vehicle and establish the lifestyle. And we're also seeing some knee, which for the 60s... Oh, that, that was, was... Yeah. Oh, that was radical. That was very radical. Because prior to that, dresses would have been below the knee. Is what Three inches below the knee. There was a very exact statement on where hems should come. 
So when you go to the auto shows, you see not only the latest in vehicles, cars, technology, but also in fashion. And a lot of people came in those days to see the fashion, too. And now, what did you call that twirl of fabric off the shoulder? It's chiffon. It's, yes, it's like a little cape, a little capelet. It's a little piece of drama. It's called allure in fashion, just a little alluring touch. Very good. Okay, time to bring up the next one that we have. And now we're going to the 1960s. And Karen, you were talking about short dresses. Mm -hmm. Well, when this brocade dress came out and stood beside 1960 Plymouth Savoy, it was a headliner. And think of the 1960s, John. Tail fins were really part of the design element. This dress has its own tail fins with its sweeping chiffon back. And this is really something that would be relevant today. This is a perfect dress for a cocktail party or a movie premiere. So it really has stood the test of time. And good car design does that, and good fashion design does that too. Mm -hmm. And again, a great collection of colors going on here. You know, the, the solid lavender, but it's offset with this gold in the, in the outfit itself. Under lights of the auto show, this would have been stunning, striking. You would have seen this across the floor in some exhibit and just be compelled to walk over. Mm -hmm. And just remember, the, the cars are great but they need a human presence. So brand, the brand people put people beside them because this established who was going to be driving the car. Well, good, thank you very much. And now we're going to step it up another decade. So Marjorie, tell <laughs> us, what are we about to see here? And let's bring the first model on. Well, we're going 60s, 70s, and 80s, and we're going into a section I call the living dolls. These are really glamor clothes. So think 1960s very glamorous and this went with the Lincoln Mark V limo and you can see the ultimate in luxury and this certainly attracted a lot of attention at the auto shows the ultimate of going out in a limo with the most fabulous costume available and I love these fur cuffs Yes, at Mink, uh, it was not politically incorrect in those days to show fur and to show mink on the most luxurious satin fabric. And in the 1960s, satin was the fabric with a jeweled top and a rosette. And Karen, I'm sure you'll agree this fashion-forward jacket could certainly be worn with other pieces, too. Absolutely. And one of the things that I really love about this is this is one of the first times we're seeing metallic on the auto show floor, correct? Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is, I mean, metallic is so important today in gold, silver, copper, and this is a really great representation of that, that you know, shininess. A lot of metallic can look shiny and cold. This doesn't look cold at all. Oh, it's no, very it's warm. So warm, yeah. And very inviting and mm -hmm. very That's luxurious. It's everything that the designers of that limousine wanted to show beside it. And of course, you can imagine her, her standing beside a very gorgeous man in a tuxedo. It's it's just the complete dream look. Very good. Thanks very much. Let's bring in the next one. And then talk about a dream look. One of the most fabulous cars is, of course, Lamborghini. And this stood beside a Lamborghini Courtoux 3. And it has elements of Italian design, classic. And the model even told me when she put it on, it could even be a wedding dress. Yeah. Good. Very simple, yet very elegant. And you know, this dress has um, real elements of Versace to it when mm -hmm. I look at it, and which is interesting because Versace and Lamborghini have partnered together yes, they have. on a car before, and I believe even going so far as to create matching luggage and shoes and driving gloves so that you had the complete set. And it started here. It started here with this very glamorous chiffon dress. And the draping is so elegant. You can see this beside the elegance of a Lamborghini, which is noted for its very sleek, beautiful lines. One of the most beautiful car concepts in the world. And whereas the last outfit, to me, looked very fall or wintry, this is definitely a summer one, I would say. Or it could be all year round, yeah, just depending on where you are. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, maybe in Michigan or the snow <laughs> belt, it wouldn't be. But, uh, it's winter white. Winter white. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Thank you. And, and then we have here. coming up is the all-American look with a concept car for Corvette, a very special Barbie concept car. 
And when you think of Barbie, of course the color has to be pink. And the concept car was unique because it was a purple pink and the model who stood beside it in this dress matched the car exactly in color. But what's interesting about this dress, it has every design element going on in it, which I'm sure you'll agree with, Kara. Yes, yes, that is the epitome of 80s design. Over the top, kind of never knowing when to quit <laughs> with your fashion. And right. where many of these dresses we've seen so far, I would wear in a heartbeat. This is one that really feels specifically dated to the 80s and maybe for a costume party. <laughs> Maybe. Well, it has sequins, pearls, rosettes, ruching, everything on it. But it also is the embodiment of Corvette, which is all Americana, all American girl, all American guy. And when I saw the car that she stood beside this summer, uh, it, it's just a dream machine. And this was a dream dress in the 1980s. Very good. And then we we're going to one more here. Right, we're going to something a little more elegant, and that is elegance, black and silver together. This stood beside the Toyota Supra. So it was sexy. It was definitely a lifestyle dream and elegant and on the show floor on a turntable, it would turn heads. Mm -hmm. And many dresses of the 1980s in the auto show were encrusted with embroidery or in crystals or rosettes and catching under the lights of the exhibit was a very exciting thing to see. You just see the dress here, but beside the right car in the right color with the interior having some silver elements, really and pretty I, hot. I love how sexy this dress is without showing too much. You know, you get the, the peak at the shoulders and that little bit of the back and then that slit. So it's like you're just kind of giving the little the little tease of the sexy without just throwing it all out there. It's very covered up and it's very long, but it is certainly a stunning dress. And very relevant for today. I could see yes. this at a movie premiere or even an award show or charity preview. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks very much. Right. Marjorie, I understand that up to now we've seen individual dresses from different eras, but now we're about to see three that sort of go together. Right, a suite of dresses. Well, let's bring the first one Okay. On. Uh, this was designed in the mid-80s for Pontiac for the Firebird series. And if you're familiar with the Firebird motif, you can see it written all over this dress and how the beads are put together and the design. And there are three of these dresses that I have brought because the designer, Naeem Khan, designed a suite of them for the auto show floor. Well, let's bring the next dress on and explain who Naeem Khan is for well, those of us who don't you know. You mean you don't know? Well, I will let Karen do that since she is our fashion expert. Uh, Naeem Khan actually um, is still very relevant today as a designer. So he's been designing for a number of decades. And while his clothes aren't quite this uh, over the top, <laughs> he does still have a beautiful ability for embellishment, as you can see here. Well, you have to remember also, it's mid-80s. And during that time, Cher was touring the country with her concerts. And her designer was Bob Mackey. So I, when I look at these, I think these are very concert-looking dresses, very glamour dresses oh, yeah. that even Cher would have worn oh, during, uh, yeah. during that time. And I love the feathers, like you talked about. Because, the fire of course, bird feathers. Because, being firebird, yeah. it really ties in that way. And remember, the Firebird was a fabulous four-seater car, and General Motors did a four-seater car instead of a two-seater car because they didn't want to compete with Corvette, which I thought was an interesting thing. And but this really is a, a literal translation of the Firebird, you know? I mean, you really can see that design element of the car in every one of these dresses in a different way. And oh, also interesting the color. Too, that they do three that tie in as a common motif rather than just have everyone wear the same outfit. And that was very radical in the 1980s to have, actually there were six of them, you see three right. of them here, but to see six different dresses or ensembles on the auto show floor that was like, oh, you mean they're not going to match? Uh, that was a hard design concept to, um, to get across. And also the color is exactly the Pontiac red, which is a very specific hot red Americana uh, color. Very good. Thank you very much.
And now, Margie, you tell me that you've actually saved <laughs> the best for last. I have is Chrome Girl. And Chrome Girl is my interpretation of the goddess of the siren of Chrome. And she is the embodiment of all of the product specialists and all of the people who have worked the auto shows, standing beside those beautiful pieces of sheet metal we know as the cars. She is the goddess of all auto shows. And, and that's where our creator. Yes. I think that you should really consider giving her a partner. We could do Leather Girl. We so, could. Yes, they could be like the dynamic duo of auto shows, and you're yeah. representing the exterior and the interior side by side. Chrome and leather. That's yeah. a great concept. <laughs> I want to give Wait. you a new project. I'm right. We ought to take that on the road. <laughs> Just like the auto shows do. You know, there are 93 of them around the United States. Well, that's stunning. I had no idea there's that many auto shows. Of course, there's all kinds of regional ones. Uh, that's that's true. And beside each uh, auto show, there are the sirens of chrome. And so these outfits have got to stand up to a lot of wear and tear. Yes, when you figure many product specialists work over 100 days a year, they have to be constructed well, great fabrics, and good dressmaker techniques, and of course they have to be dry cleaned a lot. Well, Marjorie Krebsky <laughs> and uh, Karen Buscemi, I've got to thank you both for having instructed me on a whole <laughs> lot here, and I love these outfits, and I hope all of you have enjoyed a very different kind of auto line this week.